you guys, me again. <laughs> Getting the car ready. Uh, we we think we're going to hit the boat. Uh, yeah, it's a little warm. Weather's looking decent. It's warm. So we're getting the car ready. And, uh, you know, going through the gear as usual. You know, coolers. Got the glasses. The bags ready, you know. Got the, the koozies ready. Got my safety gear. The tourniquet, of course, that's always ready. Got the chill pal. You know, got all the rest of the safety gear ready, right? Got the trauma pack ready, got the marker ready, all that stuff. You know, got a little bit of food in the bag, got some extra towels, some extra clothes. Of course, you know, it goes in there and in there. <laughs> well, dirt. But here's the thing. That's being prepared. That's preparing ourselves for what we are about to do, right? There is a certain measure of preparedness that we need to take for everything that we're going to do. You know, like, for instance, I'm not going to wear these to go on the boat or to even drive, right? In which case I will wear these. But when we're going to go out on the boat, we're going to wear these. So there are different things for different things, right? There's different tools that we're going to need to do different things. But there's one thing and only one thing that we need all the time. <clears throat> you know, the Bible, once again my go-to for all things. Mentions in uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 8. Paul, through his letters to Timothy, his protege, mentions to, Tim to Timothy that physical training profiteth nothing but, you know, spiritual training and godliness not only profits us for the life we have now but for the life that comes hereafter so now what I'm going to say to you is this we look at the world as we do right now without anything on our eyes without that level of spiritual preparedness, without seeing the world through our spiritual lenses, and we see it for what it is, right? Look at the sky. The sky looks okay. I mean, it's overcast. It's warm to my back, which is east, and to the west, it's, it's, eh, it's not bad looking. It's very overcast. I feel the humidity, and I feel these things, right? But I put these on, and I look. And now, through these polarized lenses, I see that doesn't look so good. Maybe it's not a very good boating type day. Looking a little sketchy. Pretty much everywhere, as a matter of fact. As Christians, we see the world through a new set of lenses. Those lenses are given to us by God and through his instruction, through his leading us to the proper things, to the things that he wants us to know, how he wants us to become educated, right? Now, physical training is actually of some importance. For example, I really, being uh, 52 years old myself, and when I put on my plate carrier and my armor and all my gear, I quickly realized that, holy shit, <laughs> this is going to suck. I hope I never have to use this stuff. But as a Christian, I have the full armor of God 
that protects me against all wickedness and evil because I have been trained in God's wisdom and what he wants me to know. That will benefit me more, substantially more, than level 3 body armor that's way too freaking heavy to be running around like I'm 20-something. Because I'm not. I'm 50, too, fat, out of shape, and I smoke too much. <laughs> and I really like coffee, so there's that. I guess what I'm trying to say is, man, listen. You can be prepared as you can be. You know, prepared to go to the lake. Prepared to fight off an intruder. Prepared to fight a battle. All of these fleshly things. But what's come on to the world that's becoming more and more evident at a rapid pace, an even more rapid pace than what it's been in the past, should be a pretty good indication that you need to train yourself up in God's wisdom. And the only way that you're going to get that godly wisdom is by repentance. Through repentance and faith in Christ will you get those glasses that you'll see the world for what it is and understand that passage of 1 Timothy 4, verse 8. But to the worldly man, it's kind of foolish. Well, I'll leave that up to you, man. But in this day and age, your best preparation and your strongest armor and your most fiercest weapon is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's it. Because that's a battle we're up against. Yes, there may be a time when you need to defend yourself or your loved ones or innocence. But more so, I believe, will you need... Well, you're going to need that spiritual armor. And uh, that is spoken of in the book of Ephesians 6. Ephesians? I think it's Ephesians 6.12. I can't remember right offhand. Anyways, I think I'm done here. For now. I'm going to go ahead and try to enjoy the day on the lake. If it starts raining... And park the boat and come back home. If not, then shenanigans will continue and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm not going to allow every little negative thing that I see to keep me in fear because I don't live in fear. I live in preparation. I live in expectation of things to come through what I foresee because I do a test beforehand and in terms of today it's fitty fitty well, I'm going for it because without risk comes no reward and your reward of being in Christ is eternal and once it's given to you it's never taken away because that's his gift to you. Remember, God loves you. I love you. Until next time, my friends. See you.